Hi friends, mind the squeaky chair. Okay, I'll try not to move. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever you've, you've been doing for the past couple of months since we, or uh, since you last heard me speak, I hope things have changed for the better. And even if it hasn't, know that it's still happening for you, not to you. <laughs> Little moment of wisdom there for you. Um. Today's guest is a friend of mine that I met here in Chiang Mai, a fellow Singaporean as well, who I had the pleasure of chatting with. Um, he's someone that I met here, so it's, it's not a friend of mine from back home, but it just randomly, I bumped into him at Jiu Jitsu, and then we started chatting and realized that we had a lot of things in common. And then I decided to like, yo, uh, Bro, you wanna fucking do this with me? And you know, with a as good as good of a as good of a spot he is, he decided to yeah, okay, let's let's do it. You know, open mind, open heart, and then one thing led to another. Here we are. Um, I think uh, it's a very simple episode today. Nothing too intense, nothing too deep. Although there were some points that were like oh, quite interesting. I felt. Uh, just two guys talking basically. Ooh, fuck! I need to sign my phone. God damn. Hold please. Okay. Apologies. Uh, what was I saying? Just two friends talking. Uh, just having fun, getting to know each other, and talking about the things that we like. So I hope you enjoy it. Um. Also. There's a bit of construction going on halfway, maybe at the hour mark of the podcast. I, I, I fucking as always, right? There's always been this curse that every time I do an episode, there's some fucking construction happening. Uh, and true enough, the, there was one also on the day itself, and because it was at the unit like downstairs where I'm staying, so it does it did it's a bit louder. Uh, but I did my best to. To minimize all the noise and stuff like that, you know. Uh, I removed like sometimes if there's a pause, I re- I'll remove it just because it's just noise at the background, right? So if you happen to notice like, just you know maybe some, some parts like a bit cut off or you feel like the pause is very f- short, right? It's just because I I I did that. Okay. Uh, you may notice it. You may not. Uh. I am not like a professional sound editor thing. I'm not even a professional, whatever this is, interviewer, podcaster thing. So you know, here we are. Uh, just anyhow, na. Okay, so sumi masen in advance. If you if you are a long time listener of the podcast, uh, when you know and you like what you hear, uh. You as always can go to coffee dot com slash mostly yoga to show your support. If you decide to donate, thank you very much. And if you don't, that's fine. Also, I will always keep doing this for free. It will always be free to listen to, and I'm happy to just make this for fun, just to chat with, with bleh, just as an excuse to chat with my friends. So, if you learn something from this, great. If you don't, I hope you had fun. And uh, yeah, and if you, this is your first time listening, welcome. You yeah, know, right. Yeah, without further ado, let's just dive right into it. Um, here's my friend Rio. Enjoy. Thanks for the coffee. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kaishala. Uh, maybe try and put it on this one later. Uh, the sound. Right, that okay. makes sense. But cool. again, small thing. Um, my man. The way that we met, and also okay, let me let me give a proper introduction now. Okay, so you are the first person that I've had a episode with here in this house. I've had a few episodes done before back when my previous trip to Chiang Mai with my Chiang Mai friends. Of course, mm-hmm. you've heard it, right? Yeah, yeah. But in this space, you are the first one, and also you are someone that surprisingly has entered into like we we bump into each other, right? Um. Sitting in front of me is uh, Rio. 
Is that how I pronounce your name? Rio, yeah. yeah. Okay. A fellow Singaporean also who, who I've met in Chiang Mai, who I've also bumped into at Jiu Jitsu, that's where we first met. Yeah. And the interesting thing about our encounter is usually I don't go morning class. Just so happens, one of, it's one of those days I've, I got mood, I got energy, okay, I'll go. And then I saw this Chinese guy there. Then I, okay, usually I won't talk to newbies because maybe I see them today, I don't see them tomorrow. Yeah. And I don't like risking rolling with people I don't know. Uh, so I was trying, I usually just, not that I'm Tao, but I just, I don't want to waste the effort of like, hey, how are you? What's your name? What are you doing here? Blah, blah, blah. And then like tomorrow I don't see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So then I saw you, but, but, but like, and I, like I just preference, I don't talk to new people, but I happen to like, hey, well, I just spoke to you, right? Yeah. And like, hey, where are you from? Oh, Singapore. Hey, <laughs> kaki <dan." laughs> Then we start chatting. And then uh, I think I had to rush off after, after class, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah, but yeah, we yeah. can't we yeah. touch. Mm-hmm. And I found out a few things about you. you you're Singaporean. You, uh, you blue belt. Same interest, same 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 path in a sense. Same very same, very similar. Same very, thing, right? Very very yeah. So we came in touch. Then we went for a coffee, chatted for a bit. Then like, hey, this guy not bad huh, to talk to. By the way, do you want to come by and do a podcast with me? And here we are, <laughs> just like that. Exactly how it happens. You came by. You brought some nice coffee from the fancy place. Okay. Um, do you want to give a bit of an introduction of 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 just brief one if you want to otherwise I can just start asking stuff already uh, uh, I usually suck at intros <laughs> I know it's kind of hard to define what I do or you know uh, who I am I know what you mean um, I usually don't ask people to introduce themselves I feel it's a very corny way of like oh so tell me about yourself yeah. and they're like oh, what the fuck is the guy gonna say right but anyway uh, tell me about your jujitsu journey how did it start what made you even want to do it? Because so, I feel like, you know, origin story was very important. Right? Cool. Um, yeah, let me share. Um, I, honestly, I started off with Muay Thai first. Same? Yeah. yeah. Is it in here? Yeah. Um, in Same Singapore, way. actually. In Singapore. I think I was around 16, started Muay Thai. And then, um, when I came to Chiang Mai, that was when I first started uh, Jiu Jitsu. I, I got exposed to it. I got exposed to the it. The first... Okay, so again, you did your education visa 10 years ago, which is what I'm doing now. Yes, so 2011. You, so you you were... You started just 10... During that time? That was the first time I got exposed. Uh-huh. I was training Muay Thai, yeah. and then I see these guys doing Jiu-Jitsu, uh-huh. and it never made sense to me because I see these guys hugging each yeah, other, yeah, getting yeah, yeah, sweaty, yeah, yeah. right? But... I think one thing that intrigued me was the guys that go to jiu-jitsu, they always show up. They're very mm-hmm. consistent. And the guys in Muay Thai, you know, sometimes you see some people come, some people don't come. They're more like, I'd say, martial art tourists mm-hmm. or fitness okay, tourists. Okay. You know, some people come, want to lose weight, want to punch some bags, but then a while later, you don't see them. Mm-hmm. But I see the jiu-jitsu guys, they're always showing up on the mm-hmm. mats. And I was like, what? It intrigued me because... It's not something I would do, mm. but it seems like these guys loved it. Mm. So I thought one day, I thought, hey, might as well try it. Because I see in the UFC too, right? Mm-hmm. If I want to learn MMA, maybe that's something that I'll try. I try it, and then I was like, wow, I, I really enjoyed it. So that was my first exposure to um, Jiu-Jitsu. But then within a month or two, I think within two months, I, I stopped. You started this in Thailand? 2011. Where? Around 2012. Which, which gym? Um, it was a very old gym. I can't remember. Team. Where, no, I, I don't remember the name. Okay. Honestly, where, was it? where was it? Mm-hmm. It's on the south south of... Uh, oh. Southern part of... Okay, okay. I don't remember the Probably name. Probably close already. Might be. Yeah, okay. Um, But I, I, I did it for two months mm. or so. And then I stopped. Um, and the reason why was uh, I realized was that I had conflicting goals because on one hand um, I wanted to you know back in those days look good build some muscle right that's how you always start like, you, you you start any fitness thing for aesthetics yes yeah. yes so there's a lot of uh, motivation around looking good mm. having a nice body vanity yeah. 
vanity for sure. Um, trying to get the chicks, lah, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, so I, I do enjoy this whole grappling thing, but what's the point of like learning how to choke somebody mm. or like very good at hugging another guy? It's not gonna the mo- get the, me closer the to my goals. The motivation was was different. Like, it wasn't to get better at jujitsu. It was to just get later, right? Back then, back yeah. then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Understandable. Every. every of course, how many twenty twenty plus years old? Yeah. It's all you support life. <laughs> yeah. So 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 then I I I I stopped my I stopped Muay Thai. I stopped um, BJJ too. Um, just focused on working at the gym. Mm. And twenty six twenty seventeen, I got back into it again. But for a mm. month, I was like, oh, maybe let me just do two years. Try to focus on getting my blue belt, and then I can just. Fuck this off. is where it is where now. This so is when I was in. Uh, I was living in KL, uh. so I, was, I had a few friends who all decided, that, hey, you know, let's do BJJ. Mm. You know, that's and I'm like, all right, sure, let's do it. But for me, my goal was back then was also again very short sighted because again it's conflicting because there's only a limited amount of time yeah. we set aside for fitness, right? So conflicting goals. We did it for two classes and then one friend because we did private classes. Oh, okay, okay. We bought private classes because they, they didn't want to join the group yeah, class. Yeah. And then one friend had to go back to Australia mm. um, out of a sudden and then <laughs> ever since he left, we, we just yeah we just did not go back. Mm. And, um, and I realized that back then, again, there was conflicting goals. Mm. And then more recently, 2021, 20, there was a period where I started to value doing things that I love mm. instead of chasing uh, let's say vanity goals or something else doing the thing for the thing itself lo, not for the outcome of the thing yeah. or what the thing can give yeah, you yeah 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 right and I realized that that was higher purpose yeah it, it resonated mm. with me at that point of time because I mean growing up in Singapore we were always taught to the way that we were shaped is always about like earn money earn money but it's always about um, also about like Safe results, yeah. results, right? What gets you the most Prestige. outcome, um, and what gets you outcomes, basically, yeah. right? Don't waste time, right? Very practical, right? Everything is all about making sense. It has mm. to be logical, mm. and and going to the gym makes the most sense. Like keeps you fit. It helps you look good, build muscle, everything, right? There's no value on doing things that you love or fun because there's no value in that. Well, that's a very sad statement, but I, it's true. Eh, and right? that's how we've been brought up to think, right? Yes, that's yes, why people yes. are caught up in like Don't chasing. waste time, uh, you know, playing basketball, go and learn tuition, that kind of thing. Absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. And um, it was during that period that I was like really trying to reframe and then putting a lot more value on like doing things I love because I realized that along the way, the like you lost a sense of who you really are mm. chasing all these things right you, you, you suddenly forget like okay what do you really love mm. and why does it even matter because then you live life very like a robot mm. right just trying to chase results trying to make more money trying to get more results at the end of the day you lose your own identity who are you right so then at a point in my life I was like alright I need to do something like mm. I, I want to connect with who this person really is what what's truly meaningful to me mm. and, and and I realized that BJJ was was it mm. and that's how I started my whole journey and then having this idea that I'm no longer chasing results because back then I was like oh I want to get a blue belt and then I just I think every jujitsu practitioner at some point will always like after a while, you realize that the belt means nothing. It means something, but it doesn't mean anything in the grand scale of things. Because Absolutely. if you trace the belt, the belt, anybody, I can also go and buy a belt, belt, black belt and wear it tomorrow. Right? So the Absolutely. belt is, the value is in is intrinsic. It's not extrinsic. That's right. So if you wear the belt, but you don't believe that you can have the, you know, the belt doesn't give you power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, you, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, the, the goal isn't to chase the blue belt. The goal is to be better at the thing. That's right. Right? Yeah. That's right. Um, so it's hard for people I mean we can say this but not not everyone will get to the same conclusion right not everyone can get to the same conclusion and it, I understand because imagine you've been training BJJ for 5 years mm. and then your friend was like oh you've been training BJJ what belt are you and then you're like oh I'm still a white belt then people are like, oh. <sighs> Man, <laughs> then you're like story of my life 
Oh yeah, which which is back to what you're sharing with like you. I you have th- been doing jujitsu for like nine years, eight years. That's a black that's black belt already. Yeah. <laughs> all my when I've started, all of my friends are now at least purple or blue, wow. right? Yeah. Of course, yeah. it's been eight yeah. years. That's right. And I'm still white, and from my second strike to my third strike was like six years, you know. Wow. And I, when I got my third strike, I felt like I didn't deserve it because I was very inconsistent. And it was, uh, it was a gym in Chiang Mai, Coach Brian, your shout out. Uh, but, and unfortunately, they had, they had, the gym had to close. And I think because it was like the last day that he like sort of gave out the, the, the thing, I get, and I've been training with him for a while or so, so I get it if he sees value and he, he gives me the thing, I accept it, right? Because yeah. he's my coach. But there was a conflict because he saw something that I didn't see in myself. Absolutely. So I didn't feel like I was a three stripe, you know. Mm-hmm. Even now, maybe I'm just getting to three stripe, but I'm still getting smashed every day, right? Mm-hmm. So I've been doing this for like eight, nine years, still a white belt, nothing to show for in that sense. And I've given up quite a lot of things already, right? I've given up my time, I've given up my work to come here, yeah. I've given up my family, my friends, yeah. my. I've given up most of my time. I don't. I, I, mean, I, don't, yeah. I don't do anything. Like, yeah. I don't, I'm very boring. I don't go out. I don't drink. I don't party. I don't. I don't play on. I just come. I just wake up. I just train. I just fucking study all this shit, and I just all this. And eight years later, I'm still white belt, but I'm very content there in a sense right. because I'm not chasing the outcome. Yep. I just wanted to sake the for the sake of me even being able to wake up and do this is already. I'm very lucky already. You know, so. If, that perspective shifted for me. I feel a bit more like, mm, more satisfied lah. You know, you wake up, you can play, you can already. That's all. If the blue belt comes, great lah. Yeah. But also, it, it's pressure. Eh, you know, <laughs> when you get a new okay. belt, you become a beginner again. You know, Absolutely. reset. Eh. Absolutely. There are different. I I I would say there are definitely different um, challenges mm. to each uh, belt level. Um, but I love I love your mindset as to how you you're dealing with it and. It's, 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 it's definitely something that I resonate with. Like, not caring about belts and just loving. I just love to do it. Right. Tell, um, share with me some of the, like, what, what like, you, you were talking about mindset. Share with me some of the parallels that you feel that Jiu Jitsu has taught you that you can use or implement in regular life or so. Or even in trading, if we want to digress into that. Because I feel like everything is connected Very in connected. that sense, right? I wouldn't say um, so. So one thing that came to me, I wouldn't say it's something that jujitsu taught me, but it's just the parallels that I saw. Oh. Right, um, is to learning to learning to trust the process, mm-hmm. learning to trust yourself, and learning to trust the process. El- elaborate. So oftentimes, I think when we face challenges, sometimes we may feel like, "Well, oh, this like, oh, people may have certain ideas." Oh, I. I can never get better at jujitsu, right? They, they they try to learn a move and they keep failing. Oh, then they they get very disappointed, or um, they they wish they were somewhere further. It's like oh, I'm a blue belt, but I, I, there's so many things I don't know, right? They, 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 then then they, they don't feel good about themselves and they they feel small, right? Um, yeah, what I learned is like um, is to learn learning to trust yourself that you got this, learning to trust the process that. These failures are part of it. Learning to fail also, right? Learning exactly. to, to lose. Uh, it, it, there is a grace that you is required when you lose also. Because in Jiu-Jitsu, it humbles you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No yeah. matter how yeah. strong you are, how smart you are, you're a doctor, you're a banker, you're yeah. a lawyer, you come there, you still wipe out. Absolutely. Know? And then some 13-year-old can smash you. Absolutely. You confirm will get humbled. Right? Absolutely. And right? even as... Even as we get to higher levels, like even when we are black belts, right? I feel like the mindset that we always should maintain is a white belt mentality, right? Mm, the biggest mind, of, yeah. Exactly. Instead of coming in and feel like, oh, you know, boss, I've been here ten years, man. right? And I crush everyone. Great, you can do that. But at the end of the day, it's about your growth and your journey, right? Mm-hmm. If you come up with the glass full mentality, sure, you come in and smash everyone. But what do you take home from that? Mm. Right, versus you come in with the intention and say, "Yes, I'm a black belt. I'm very good." But 
let me see what I can learn today. Right. I, I met this black belt um, a couple of years ago. He told me something, uh, and I it, it stuck with me. It's mm-hmm. a very passing comment, but he was saying like how when you are a, a lower belt, uh, it's very scientific. It's very mathematical mm-hmm. because you are studying the moves. You're like, okay. My right hand goes to my the, the, his left collar. Mm-hmm. Blah blah. So it's very s- one plus one is two. It's very mm-hmm. logical. Your mindset is you're looking at it very logically. And then when you get to a higher level, maybe even black, like say black level, it becomes art, if you know what I mean. So it's not about like technical anymore. It's about flowing. It's about moving. It becomes very intuitive and it becomes very spiritual. Yeah. So from starting out mathematically, logically, I need, you're learning, right? Okay, hold here, do this, blah, blah, blah. To the point where you know everything already that you are incorporating all this into a dance. Yeah. So it becomes spiritual. Yeah. So think of how like that progress is where I and I like this analogy that he used because you can sort of apply this in any kind of um trait where say even a mechanic oh not a mechanic I mean oh uh, say like learning the guitar, playing the piano, um, golfing, any kind of activity where you start out your thinking of it as very like okay I need to swing my golf club at a certain angle blah blah and then when you get the point where you're like Tiger Woods you just sort of go and you and it becomes like wow it's like a it's like a work of art you know the, the way he swings the way he connects and moves his body in such synchronicity such mastery over his own body and awareness of the environment it becomes a painting that you're looking at you know yeah I would say it's akin to learning a language. True, right? true, yeah. You learn the letters and then afterwards you or learn any the kind vocab, of anything, uh, right? Grammar. Any kind of craft yeah. that you're learning or doing. Mm-hmm. It starts mm-hmm. out that way and it ends off so such, you know. So I thought it was a very nice, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Um, but interestingly, there's a also an uh, interesting approach on like how people are learning BJJ now. It's like... Uh, ecological approach what do you mean what's, what's ecological mean so I don't 100% know what it means but um, from what I understand is um, conventionally people are learning moves mm. right and then piecing them together right or in this situation you learn this move and then you, you, you try versus that. concepts uh, is that what you're trying to say uh, versus concepts and like um, having like uh, playing games and letting people explore through oh. mini games okay so, for example, is let's say um, we learn a side control escape, right? So, we learn a, f- a few steps on how to do it, but the ecological approach is like, hey, let's play a game, mm. side control. You, these are the rules. A bottom player learns, try to escape. The top player tries to Positional sparring. Right? Positional, but with, um, with a very intentional goal and some guidelines. Ah. So, and the goal is for people to explore movement without giving them methods. So you're not defining how to escape, but oh. getting people explore the movements and and then they they come up with certain ways on their own mm-hmm. on what works. Because oftentimes you realize that you learn methods, but when you try to apply, it's for a very specific situation, yes. right? And, and you need experience to learn when to apply exactly what. Uh. And with the ecological approach, you get to explore those things. And you get an intuitive feel later on based on experience. I think this is very important for jujitsu also. Because there are times when you learn a, a move, let's say the, the move of the day. Yeah. Right? You, you, it's taught, you learn it, but then you always can't get it. Right? I always face that. Because yes. I'm not, I have to be in that exact position, then I know, oh, okay, I see it, I do it. Yes. And if I'm not put in that position all the time, I won't be able to see it. Right? right. But if, if I'm given a uh, uh, an exercise where I'm given that scenario, but not hundred percent, and I still see, need to somehow find it, I might be able to form the connections in my mind better for me to remember yep. and see that particular thing. So I think yeah, that is very important in in like a sport like jiu jitsu. I found that very interesting. I was like, yeah, I hope there are more gyms that employ yeah. these, these types of learnings because there's some gyms that are like. You show up, fifteen minutes is warm up. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I start. I started out. I mean, okay. When I first started in what's that place? Uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu Singapore. 
15 10 minutes warm up yeah. the warm up but the warm up is chill so it's just like like uh like okay like wrist stretching la throw a few triangle up, right, left, right right left yeah, right yeah. spin like just like roll forward roll backwards yeah. this is okay and then there are other gyms that it's like you're sweating eh. like push ups are jumping jack burpee like waste time so i don't like this kind of shit i just like go there okay start Exactly. Move yeah. of the day. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If I want to work out, I go to the gym. You know, I go and run. I don't want to condition myself at jujitsu. You know. So I was training in uh, Austin at the uh, uh, Henzo. Uh, that's where Danaher's yeah, uh, gym is at. No warm up. You just come in, yeah. teach the move. Because why? Why do you want? Because they all really want to uh, elite level already. What right? They're not wasting time to. They know that people are here to learn, right? Yeah. And, and and not like I guess. A lot of people have like conflicting goals. Like yeah. some people, oh, you know, do BJJ for fitness. You know, do warm ups and stuff. But okay, yeah. I'm, if you I'm really want to lose weight, go to the gym. That's really yeah. That's what I think too. How was it like? Uh, uh, which school was this? Hanzo's ah. Hanzo, which is the new wave, new wave, oh. but not the not the not the not the profession. They they have a hobbyist. Ah, uh, okay, uh, that's the one. Uh, yeah. Class and then uh, obviously not the professional professional. It's like a is yeah no different. Gi, uh, is it no gi? There's gi and no gi. So, uh, gi um, was learning from Mergali, Nicholas Mergali every morning. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Spent a month there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Very very good very good stuff. What's the um class like? How does the class go? So start class move of the day, drill, come back. Add on, come back, drill, and then just rolling. Then yeah. like normal, lah. Yeah, yeah, very standard. Okay, very right. standard, standard. Hmm. Was there any like, um, how was the how was the community like? It was okay, like it was all right. I would say yeah, not much different. Um, people like BJJ crowds. How's the community chill. like in Singapore for you? I've been in Evolve. Hmm. Um. It's generally BJJ communities are very you only start, friendly. You only did in Evolve, but you didn't go anywhere. Else. I did Evolve. Uh, I I I did a couple of days in Kapi DM because I have mm. a friend there. Um, but mainly train at Evolve because they have the best Coaches, in terms of like yeah. time schedule. Ah, time it's, schedule. it's like every so hour good. or some shit. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's me for me. I love training late mornings. Mm. Um, so. It's perfect for me. They always have classes every day. I used to go every day, so that was perfect. Um, I would say the community is um generally very very friendly lah. Like every most almost every gym that I went to, because I I I was traveling quite a lot last year. Mm. I've been to a few countries and I would every oh, I always train there. Generally, everyone's very welcoming, very nice. Um, yeah, very friendly, and I wouldn't say anything different about Evolve. Um. Mainly evolve is, is it's it's there's a lot more people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think I went to a trial, at the at evolve, uh, where is it the Chinatown one? Chinatown. Chinatown. Far Square. Uh, Fire Square. Fire Square. Square. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I went to a trial for that one. It was alright. Nice big space. Very big. Very that big space. Uh, yeah. HQ. Yeah, that's the one where everybody goes for jujitsu, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Best of, facilities. Um. The coaches are also all Brazilian, yeah, so they're yeah. very chill, mm. right? Very chill guys. Nice. Okay. It was nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. Do you think we'll do this forever? Um. That's that's a plan. That's a plan. Um. It's not looking too far out, but um. For me, I feel like as long as I feel connected to it, you know, mm. waking up feeling like I love doing it. Yeah. I'll keep Have doing you ever it. competed? I did. Where Singapore? In Singapore. Yeah, I did. White, white. That's white. Yes. Oh, I but I, I want to compete. Try, but but tell me your experience. So it's interesting because uh the backdrop of it was um I I I wanted to com- I wanted to try competing, but I, I never really knew when was the right time. Mm. There was a competition coming up, and my my gym was like, "Hey, you should go. You you you're like you're like good. You should go." Mm. And then um, I was like, "All right, cool." Then. I I've been getting feedback and people telling me like oh you're good you should go I'm like okay good um, then I'll just sign up because I was also rolling with people and I felt like yeah, I got a sense like yeah. Yeah, I'm just confident 
So I went not knowing there was like a competition class training. I only found out very later later on that was like, oh, there's actually this thing called competition class where people train for competitions. Mm. So I I went there with no competition class training. Oh, okay. Uh, I had so I had no game plan or nothing. I just wow. show up. I just show up. Okay, but I was fine. I wanted to experience yeah, it, so yeah. I went, and I even signed up for two divisions. So weight class, huh? Uh, no. One, I was. I'm in the masters, right? Masters uh, category. So masters one and adult division. I am not familiar with the that, but what does that mean? Like so, must um so they break it down between um your belt level, mm. uh and then uh your age, your age yeah. Right and your weight class, mm. so I sign up for two each different age groups. So adult is like anyone above adult, mm. so it's like maybe sixteen and above or eighteen. So then you might be paired up with some eighteen like young guy. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. eighteen to thirty and thirty onwards. Thirty to is thirty five is like master one yeah, yeah, and yeah. then thirty five, okay, something okay. like that. Right. So I was I signed up for both. But all is white lah. All, all, all is white. All is white. It's not like absolutes, right? That kind. No, 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 no. Same weight class and stuff. Uh, so the first one I, I the reason why I signed up for both was also because the masters division there just, just a wasn't people, a lot of yeah. people right to sign up for the adult one too first match I got destroyed <laughs> the guy the guy was like 20 I don't know 20 22 20, 20, 20 mm. around, around the age 2 lah I got 2 in front yeah. really <laughs> so it was so fast for uh. me and uh, he was also a judo black belt. So, these judo black belt become wah la, Yeah, yeah. But, but white belt BJJ, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it's hilarious because I, I did like a, I did a single leg on yeah. him and I took him down. But then he mm-hmm. just Get easily using that momentum to flip me over. So at first I thought I had a sweep on him. Yeah. But then later on I was like, oh, what the fuck? I'm so you, don't, you didn't even get the sweep points? No, I got swept. Okay. He, how did you? So then what happened? And then I was just defending, and then I was just yeah, I was just feeling a lot of adrenaline, yeah. and I just felt like everything was going very fast, oh. way faster than the tempo that you normally have in the gym. Yeah, that's why you need to. I also feel like you need to train at that. Yeah, you need to practice a bit with hundred percent. You know exactly. Yeah. So I've never experienced that before. Yeah. Okay. And that was like, I mean. I do, but like going well, up with like bigger yeah. guys. So then you have to go 100%, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. much bigger guys. But then this guy is not bigger, smaller, and a lot faster. Mm. So then I was so not used to it. Um, um, he got me an armbar, mm. right? Uh, I was, yeah, and I, and I lost the first one. And I was like gassed out. So gassed out. The second one, um, it was a fairer, fairer matchup with uh, being in the masters category. Uh, I won that one mm. by points, mm. uh, by points. Um, um, but even then, was a was a struggle. Was a struggle. I know my skill level is definitely better, mm. right? But the amount of him coming in fresh and me coming in with one match because oh. I did another division, right? Right, right, right? And that totally sucked the life out of me, okay. right? Uh, so how many matches so far? So I I lost one, lost, lost one, 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 and how many and the more? Third, the third one, I was like, I was totally done. Awesome. I couldn't recover. I was like, how, what's the timing between the rest? It's maybe like ten minutes, ten fifteen it's minutes fast, in eh? between, um, okay, okay. which is all right because you don't want to wait too long. Oh, that's right? true. Then your body true. cools yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the last match, the guy was in masters category. The guy was like very strong mm. very strong guy and um, and I was so tired mm. that when he put me in close guard just him wrapping his legs you around me I was like gonna throw up really. oh shit <laughs> I was like I can't move and oh. I was gonna throw up he kept you very tight uh. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just I just like a prey mm. you know waiting to be eaten by a snake you know how how did how did it end? It's got got choked out. You, out ah? No no. Not no, like you tap no, la, tap la, la, yeah, la. yeah, but I was just like You just like you're just waiting like you know waiting. you cannot. Yeah, just yeah. waiting, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like, there was no chance. I was like I can't move. Yeah. 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 And then okay, so at the end of it, what do you learn? Um I think for me it was that I 
I learned, I mean, the experience was great. It was great. It was something that I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, being in a competition, um, facing that level of aggression, right? Um, it was something that I was really looking for. And um, for me, it was that I learned that I have to prepare. Mm-hmm. Right? I learned I have to prepare better for competitions. Um, losing was all right. Um, there was a lot of experience gained. Um, but I feel like it, it's doing myself a disservice to not actually be ready mm-hmm. for it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, it's would you compete again? If I get the sufficient amount of prep, I would love to. I would, I would, I would love to. So, an interesting story is my coach. Um, he was telling me a story. He was like, at, when he was blue belt, he, he, he sucked at jiu jitsu so bad that he lost every match he competed in. 20 games no wins <laughs> okay no wins at all um, but it was only after his purple belt he finally got it yeah and that's where he started to win win a lot but but I just like I'm, I'm just having a lot of respect for the level of perseverance uh, and commitment right to not quit in the face of 20 wins yeah. z- 20 losses 0 wins when I go training yeah. and I'm like I lose I mean as a white belt you, you I'm just surviving all the time yeah I'm escaping and if I get out of something for that one second I'm very happy that's already, a right? win that's it's a win, win. it's a yeah, mental win yeah. already and then so by not dying I feel like oh I'm improving but let's say I fight a, a lower lower belt like uh, maybe like one strike or uh, not not someone that's done it for a long time and I managed to pull off certain things. I feel very happy. Yeah. Right? Of course. Mm-hmm. But then the moment like I get um, smashed again, right? After winning, I feel even shittier oh. than the first time that I survived not getting anything. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then what, how do you deal with that? The, the point being is that like, I feel so shitty that like, I... Like say your coach have having to go through that twenty times. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. I can imagine, but he he kept at it. Mm. Well, it is, it is what it is, lah. Right? It's not that easy. <laughs> Surprisingly, um, it's a tough one. Let's move on to trading. Yeah. How did this journey start? And also, there's some construction. That might I think it's Nick downstairs. Oh, yeah. all right. All I right. forgot that today's Monday. Like they might start like full on drilling, but we'll see what happens. Okay, yeah, yeah. let's let's see how it goes. But okay. um, trading cool. Um, honestly, like what happened was okay. Okay. The the trading. I I started trading very early on, um, before I did anything else. The well, first thing that I did was trading forex. And what really sold me was the whole idea of compounding. Mm. Yeah, the whole idea of compounding. Um, the the so, planting the seed. Uh. So I think back then it was always about like how do we get financial freedom, right? There's a certain number that we we need, want to hit, and um, with trading, the beauty of it is that you can start with not a lot of money, mm. but through the power of compounding, right? You can make a lot, mm. and the, back then the numbers were like if you start with about three grand, right? And if you can just compound your money at ten percent every month, in three years you'll be a millionaire, something like that. Mm. Uh, I can't exa- exactly remember all the numbers, but that was what sold me. I was like, wow, in three years, with it's like the whole you know you fold paper in half. Yeah. If you fold it like 20 times it reaches the moon or some shit like that oh, you know right, I mean? really? yeah, like if you fold a paper in half mm-hmm. the thickness of it and then that thickness folds in half and then yeah. that thickness folds in half yeah, yeah. if you fold it like maybe like 30 or 40 times it reaches the moon already oh wow because okay. imagine if, a, if this mm-hmm. thing you times 2 times 2 times 2 it's oh, compounding okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so the power of compounding was what sold me to, to start trading but then um, as I was Trading forex. Right? What we did was we learned from a guy who 
like a guru. Mm. But apparently, the guru was like a Scammer. sketchy lah. Like, there's right. a lot they're of all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all sort of scammy one. You have to really find the bad, the right one. That's yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, there's not many good teachers it's, that are good at trading and that are willing to teach that are legit, right? Yeah, and it's such a easy uh, industry to scam people. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Because you don't know what, then you just like the guy say buy you buy all. Oh, yeah. Right, and it's really probability, or you don't know what. You don't know and. He have all his people buying at the same time. It will rise. It will make it rise, man. So in a way, that's how he does it. Then when it reaches a certain level, he take out. But he he don't tell y'all, man, or some shit like that. That that's also possible. Yeah, that's also possible. But um, a lot of them could also be like, um, having fake track records. Mm, right. They don't they, even they show Photoshop it. Photoshop right? meta. <laughs> Yeah, they Photoshop or they have multiple accounts. Yeah. Maybe 10 are losing to show you the, the, the winning mm-hmm. one. Right? You don't know too. Um, but if you... Yeah, in, in general, it's very hard to find a, a, a yeah, yeah, yeah. someone who is very good and is also like willing to teach. There's a lot more available right now, but in the back then, it's just very hard to find. Right? Um, so yeah, we, got, we went and we realized it was a scam and, and that was when I gave up. I was like, okay, maybe this, it sounds good, but I don't know how to get there myself. Mm. So I was like, okay. And then some other opportunity came up, which was poker. Mm. And then I decided to pursue that. So so trading was put on hold only until uh, around, around, I would say 20, 2017, 2016, 2017, when crypto was back, I was like, um, trading more with crypto, mm. yeah. Um, you caught then, the wave, uh, right? Caught the wave, uh, but really, trading day in day out was um, like more day trading stuff. I think it's around twenty twenty COVID period. That's where I found some great resources online with crypto mm. and stuff. That I started to evaluate and realize that oh wow, okay, this guy's legit. I can actually learn from this guy and that got me started on the train of like day trading mm. and yeah that, that was that was maybe 2020 yeah similar to Jiu Jitsu what are some of because okay so I, my question is what are some of the things that you've learned from trading that you can implement in life or vice versa, or even if, again, we relate it from what are some of the things that you learned from jujitsu that can apply in trading, and what are some of the philosophies that you that you have instilled within yourself? The biggest one, again, that shows up is trust the process, trust mm. yourself. It's very easy to have self-doubt, and it's even easier when there's no an- anchor, right? What do you mean? Like, you, like how do you benchmark your, your, your performance? You oh, don't know, don't exactly true. know, right? Yeah. Like, even if you, you, you made a profitable trade, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean, anything. Or it doesn't you mean lost, that you're good or right? bad. Yeah. It doesn't, you, you don't really know. And there's oh. so much variance in the game. That right? is true. And there's no like concrete feedback. That is true because yeah. trading is not like a normal thing. Eh? It is. It goes beyond logic. Mm. If I want to know whether I'm getting better at jujitsu, there's the belt system to tell me. Yeah. There is whether I'm smashing people or surviving. Yeah. There's a very... A rather a, a linear path to okay. show whether you're improving yeah. but for trading you can win 10 trades and yeah. still suck at trading because yeah. you're lucky you you caught it at the right time but that doesn't mean you know how to manage anything absolutely you know you win 10 today you can lose one but that one can wipe you out already absolutely yeah and you can even be winning for five years mm. and think you're, you're a winning trader but one thing make a mistake got caught off guard right yeah, so you really don't know you don't, you how don't know. you are progressing in something like that. So Which then is, if you don't know how to, you're progressing, how can you continue? How can you be consistent? Which is again your, your advice, which is to trust. Trust yourself. Trust trust the process. The process. This is the process, mm. right? Failing is, part of, failing is part of the process. Like what you said yeah, exactly. at, at the coffee shop that day, mm-hmm. like you said to, to embrace the failures yeah. and to embrace the volatility. Also, you told me this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Instead of fearing it, learn to love it. Love it. Like, if you love the challenges, if you love the failures, 
because of what it provides you because every failure provides you with something mm-hmm. it's a teacher right you sure you pay a price but make sure you learn the lesson mm-hmm. and the lesson be, then becomes wisdom if you don't learn the lesson it becomes trauma right <laughs> There's, there's, like there's a difference, yeah. right? Yeah. So trauma is when there's emotions attached to it. Oh, I like this. Right? Like so you have fear, right? Yeah. Um, but wisdom is when there's no fear because you already know how to handle it, right? Um, and 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 that's the same approach with trading is that you got to learn how to trust the process and this is the process. Love it, and trust yourself, right? That you got this. Is very often we grow up in a, I mean Singapore especially, right? Um, there's not a lot of um, the, the the approach generally uh, upbringing in the Asian family is very much uh, being, it's not a lot of uh, positive reinforcement it's always like let's put it that way That's critical okay. or on, on things that you could you could do better right yeah. it's never really pointing out what you could do well mm. and, and, and that that becomes our subconscious mm. right and then we get to a point where we never really give ourselves this positive reinforcement we have a lot of self-doubt yeah it's com- completely opposite to another um, let's say um, a westernized kid who is like who, think he's, who thinks he's a special snowflake and can accomplish everything right mm. um, yeah so it's like how do we balance that yeah. mm. I get I, I, I really like what you said about so like a loss is a loss but a loss is also a valuable if you learn the lesson and it's about managing your risk or so right if you one time lose ten dollars but the value of that lesson that you've learned is priceless worth the ten dollars i pay i happily pay it to learn this lesson but if you never manage properly and one lesson costs you one thousand dollars not worth the lesson yep right yep so it's also in that in itself is the lesson or so absolutely right absolutely I guess uh, a way of knowing whether you are a good trader isn't about your PL, but it's also how you manage your risk ultimately. Because the strategy is just an, a matter of executing. You see it, you execute, you're a robot, right? And also, I, I think I saw something on Instagram or some somewhere about how, um, like I said, trading isn't logical. A logical skill that you want to improve on, you you put in the hours, you train and you read and you watch on the market lah, and you study and everything. Yeah. But then, it doesn't mean that you're getting better because it's all noise in a sense. Yep. The yep. more you know, the more you, you're confusing yourself. Stick to one strategy. That's, right? That's right. what everybody says. Stick to one strategy. Trust the strategy. Don't listen. I mean, be aware of the news, but don't listen to it. And just, you see it, you execute. If it goes down, if if you win, I let it go. If you lose, I let it go. You just because it's probability, but it's a numbers game. Out of the five, just win three, right? Or even just win two, but the risk and reward still out, out, out. You know, so then, it's about doing less. It's about not over trading, not revenge trading. It's about just sitting still. Right, you're a sniper. You're not a machine gunner. You just wait. Yeah. You camp there. Yeah. You see it. You bang. Yeah. Right. You're not the gunner. Bang, 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 bang. You're running around. Bang, bang, bang. You're just there. You're one bullet. You just wait. You wait for the perfect setup. You see it. You take it. You lose. Not your fault. Right. And I think from my experience when I started out, because I was trading with such a, a low risk, ten dollars, ten dollars. I can. I just shoot. Bang, 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 bang. The more the merrier, ma. But now, of course, I lose. Lose ten dollars. Lose ten dollars is no big deal. But you lose ten dollars ten times is a hundred dollars. Really. Yeah. Right, then it becomes painful. Yeah. So I was I became very strict. I became just like I need to see this, 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 this. If I don't see it, I don't touch it. And if it goes up, then I mean I don't lose anything. Yeah. But if it goes down, I lose a lot. Right? right. So I just see. If I feel like I okay, I see it, I execute. If it goes up, great. I try not to be too excited. Mm. Right? Because this is work. This is supposed to be boring, mundane stuff. If I get too excited for ten dollars going up, uh, how am I gonna manage my emotions when it's a thousand dollars? That's right. You know. Yeah. So if it goes up, I don't be too happy. If it goes down, I don't be too sad. Mm-hmm. I just I'm a robot. I just sit there. I see it. I press the button. That's all. But of course, humans being humans, sometimes we we freak out lah. 
I look at it every day, it goes up a bit, hoo hoo, like, oh, I just made like a day's worth. It goes up, oh, fuck, I just lost like uh, a PS5, I lost a, a, a TV, I lost a month's, a month's rent. But I can't look at it that way, right? You're yep. supposed to see it as just numbers. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's not real. You know what I mean? I just have to look at it and I like, just execute. So one interesting thing is um, don't fight against your own nature. Mm. So your own so what you're trying to do is you're trying to be a robot, right? Mm. But that's fighting against your own nature. Okay. Right? Because the nature the, the fact of the matter is you have emotions, mm. right? But then if you try to um dial it or numb it, mm. which a lot of people tend to do that, um you're fighting against your own nature. So what's actually wise is how do you channel that into something productive? Let's say if you're happy. You made a good trade. You're happy, right? Which is perfectly fine. Mm. Because some people say, "Oh, we should remove the emotions." I get that, but how I see it, which I I, I saw it somewhere and it made a lot of sense, is that how do you channel that? So let's say if you're happy, all right, great. How do you channel that energy into something productive? So maybe it's like, okay, great, I'm happy. Let me then channel this motivation to maybe journal or maybe to research more strategies or maybe. Put into more, put in areas where you can uh, improve your trading because you are using this happy energy which you have already as a resource. So it's like using that mm. and then putting it into somewhere that is gonna be more productive for your trading. Mm. Yeah, rather than say, oh, let me, um, you know, I should be emotionless because that's something that I've been trying to do when I play poker a lot back then. Interesting. Be emotionless, yeah. right? I have to be this. Sorry. Yeah. I like what you said. I try and speak in between the drilling. It, it will stop after a while. Okay. It's just, yeah. Maybe I'll cut it out. Yeah. I'll just leave. Yeah, I'll just leave. Yeah, go for it. Pour it from there or this one or yeah. Yeah. yeah man, it's like downstairs. Oh, the, the, the unit yeah, it's right downstairs. Uh, so far... How is it so far? I mean, yeah, it's great. No, but I meant, I meant like, uh, why, why you... You didn't want to stay at the place? Uh... I moved to the city and then um because I I I have nothing much yeah. going on here. You you left halfway. Uh? I left halfway. I left halfway. Uh but I can still access the workshop online. So they have recordings uh, basically. I don't you feel like good enough. So that's fine. I don't even need to be and here. then uh, I have uh, one of my very good friends birthday in Bangkok. Yeah. So I was like let's go surprise him. So your family are going to Bangkok. Right? They actually are going to Bangkok, yeah. <laughs> Then you stay there for uh, a <coughs> couple of days, then you go back to KL. I stay a couple of days, I go back to KL, yeah. And then after that, I'm going to New Zealand next oh. month. For uh, fun. Travel, and then I got I got a retreat. I'm going to Moria. New Zealand. It's uh, French Polynesia, so it's four hours from New Zealand. You have to fly from New Zealand. Oh. You're going to swim with the humpback whales. Wow. Yeah. It's like a retreat. It's Family like as well? No, just, just me you? and my girlfriend. My brother's coming. Like a eight day retreat kind of thing, um, yeah. We went with a guy to Egypt yeah. this start of year, so we had we were, it was like a spiritual retreat. Yeah. We had a, like a private tour in the the pyramids where we 
a great I hear, place. I yeah. hear Egypt is not a great place to travel. Alone is very bad. Yeah, you have to go with the right the, tour the, groups yeah. and stuff. And um, yeah, so this guy we went to was amazing. He took care of everything. He was like oh, perfect. So so then we we decided to go on another tour with him. This time to Moria, because he has a lot of these Wait, like. Wait, he's in Egypt or? Uh no, he just he just has tours to sacred sites and then. But it's, it's like, him la. It's, it's him. him. Yeah, ah, and okay, then he's okay. like more like the spiritual guy. Right, right. right. He's like but where's he from? Slovenia. That's where he's originally from. Yeah. And where is his tour based in? This no, it's just different kind. Like, I, how would he find him online? Online, yeah. Wow. I, I, I was looking at ways to uh, open up my heart chakra. Right. And then I was just searching and then I found his stuff. Meant because be. um Yeah, his, his workshop, which is John Volo. I don't know if you know John Volo, no. but it's Awakening the Illuminated Heart. That's the name okay, of it. Okay. I was like, oh, cool. Then I decided. And my friend... A few years back, he went to Egypt with one of the guys, and he said it was crazy. He said he went to the pyramids, and there was like a he had like a with no drugs. He had like a like a psychedelic trip, and a lot of people that went to mm. went on a trip, they had the same experience with no substance. So he's like, "Oh, you guys should definitely check out, right?" And, and, and he kept selling us, and we were like, "Okay, I found it. we had to go." So then yeah, we went, we went to the start of the year. It's great. Well, it's great. I guess we can talk about spirituality also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Whatever that how, was. How did you... How do I ask a question like this? How did you first become aware of the importance of spirituality? And how has it influenced who you are and who you are potentially becoming how is it influential um, yeah I think when I was young I was always very curious mm. so I was like oh you know I want to know why am I here what's, what's beyond me and all this stuff mm. but um, try and try and bear with us with all this construction maybe I move this closer to you yeah okay I wasn't even where we are we are alive but um it's part of the I tell you what, every time I do a podcast right especially in Singapore because there's a lot of construction with the road and like the new MRT or whatever yeah, fuck yeah. shit right or some BTO guy coming in there's of all the like of 50 old episodes I've done uh, at least like 10 or <laughs> half of them uh, got some bing 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 bing. that's crazy it's like that wow. so I think like hopefully my the listeners are patient enough to like see past it like, it uh, adds to the ambiance. So, right? <laughs> Nothing is perfect. Huh? We just got to go already. That's right. Yeah, um, yeah but back to your question was, uh, yeah, it was uh, I was always curious when I was younger and um, I'm trying to find out like why are we here? You know, what's what's out there? And there was never really a very satisfying answer to a point I was just like, okay, fuck it. It's not worth pursuing. Mm. It's, well, it's, it's not going to get me anywhere anyway, right? But then uh, as I grow older, then... Um, it's always a lot of focus on making money and then when you make enough money then you're like what's next mm. right and then the goal pulse shifts uh. yeah yeah you're like oh you can make more money but how fulfilling is that right and then it, it just got into a lot of like yeah questioning a lot of stuff like going, going to the stage where I was like a bit confused and depressed because you don't crisis. exactly yeah. right yeah like the things that I used to believe or I used to think I was a, of a certain person I was like oh I was once I'm I reach I reach my my, my, my financial goals I, I no longer am that self so I was like What's you realise that like true satisfaction can't be found externally because you reached a point where you are financially sorted already, then but then like, hey, how come I still feel unsatisfied somehow? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like um, it's it's definitely that right, and then that got me into really trying to make sense of things. And I was very fortunate because uh, I found this guy. Um, through my coach by chance 
by chance like we she did a lot of like personal development uh, work on herself and um, I just by chance found out that she 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 was she had the the keys to to a lot of a lot of my problems um, and um, all if you guys are interested uh, check out this guy called John D Martini right um, he was he was featured in this he was he was part of the yeah he was he was in the the secret movie um, um, he shared a lot of he shared a lot of wisdom on like on oh, things that are there what's his name J O H N John and then D E M A R T I yeah um, just watch any YouTube video of his that you feel calls out to you um, generally he, his principles are always the same um, but learning his wisdom yeah gave me a lot of clarity a lot of clarity and it's 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 very un- the, the principles are very universal universal um, um, so with that I got a lot more clarity um, I got to understand what brings me fulfillment right um, and then later on um, I started exploring more spirituality because I as I expand my knowledge I start to realize that like um, there's more there's more There's a lot of wisdom out there mm. that that I've 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 yet to expose myself to through my years of like just pursuing entrepreneurship and making money. And all these wisdom can allow me to live to, to be more present, to be to have a life worth living, Ultimately. to be more fulfilled, mm. have more joy, and have more love um, in life. Uh. And I realized that, that that's quite something that I'm working towards. Mm. Interesting. I think it's a very... A lot of, say, successful people, like if you look at those interviews of like Bill Gates or whoever, like those people that are like who who are successful at some point they they come to this realization of like hey i'm already at the top of the food chain how come you know i again i don't feel that i'm at the top of the mountain i don't feel that satisfaction so then what is it and then you start to contemplate right you start to change have a shift of perspective because previously your perspective was once you reach the top of the mountain everything's fine rainbows and sunshines your life is set your your infinite happiness but having reached that top of the mountain you realize like nothing much has changed hence the seeking of something higher than yourself the, the spiritual path and then once you dive into that spiritual path you realize that there's like there's so many things that you don't know and ultimately it's about giving back Right, it's about using what you have to then create more love back into the world or whatever it is. But it's something beyond you already, which is like a higher power thing. Huh? I I feel that it's it's interesting to experience that, and like only people that have reached a certain point in their progression will will come to that realization. Yeah. Um, just to add to that is that like there's no rush to get there. Mm. If anyone is because at the end of the day, your own cup has to be full first for you to be able to give, right? Mm. And I totally get that everyone is on a different journey. But for me I really believe you have to first fill your own cup Mm. to a point where you feel like I'm overflowing. Mm. Then you're like, okay, now I have more to give, right? And and giving is not in a way that is like entirely altruistic. It's only sustainable when you have a benefit towards it, um, with with it as well. So you want to give in a way where it's sustainable, where you feel like you are also benefiting from the giving. You are not like uh, overextending yourself. Like you're not like you're not like giving to the point where you don't have enough yourself. You're giving 
within within your own means, but then also still receiving. Not like I give you means you must give me back, but you give in a way that by the act of giving fulfills you also. Exactly, the act has to fulfill you. The act has to be meaningful to you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why people that pursue business, for example, with a with an intention, are also very spiritual people because mm-hmm. you give right because uh, your service, service is valued. Yeah. And, and then people that, pay you for it, right? Yeah. So and that's your receiving. And it's sustainable because people are willing to pay, but you're doing benefit. So the, it goes back to the intentional. Like say if your intention is to make money, yeah. it is a lower vibrational kind of intention. It's not higher vibrational. Yeah. But yeah. if your intention is to help people, yeah. by helping the people, and and because of that service that you provide, yeah. whether is it, say, something noble or something just simple like making making something more convenient in everyday life and people want that product they want that service and they offer money for it hey just nice I got money because I'm helping people so, right. but the intention wasn't to earn money yep. the intention was to do the, do this of yep. service yep. Yeah. that's right but even just to add to throw it out there that even if the intention is making money that's also fine because at the end of the day you're, you have to fill your own cup first yeah. right, right. So um, everyone's on a everyone's on a spiritual journey. That's yeah, that's, interesting. That's, yes, it is. Whether they yeah. are aware of it or not. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I like that. It's a very simple way of understanding this kind of thing. It is. It's not. It we're is. not going too deep into the the different planes or what. But <laughs> it's a very simple. Like even trading or so. Like when I first touched, it, like stepped my toes into the 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 river of the stock market. I always saw it as something that is like, oh, I'll never be interested in this because it's numbers and it's it's like business and it's like, I don't... It's totally not I, you. Not me, coming yeah. from a yoga space, right? Right. But then once I realized that it is spiritual, the stock market doesn't... Uh, it's like, it's like a, it's a collective consciousness, right? Yes. It only moves when everybody wants to move. It's it's God. It's the universe itself. Like the world is a collective cons- mm-hmm. con- consciousness. Mm-hmm. Just like the market, the world doesn't care about you. Just like the market, market don't care whether you lose money or you win money. Or. The market just is. Yes. Right. And everybody is part of this market. You, that's not. You tell me that's not spiritual, man. Right. Of course, what? Right? Because everybody is in, in somehow connected to this thing. That's right. Right. So when I when I start to understand what it truly is and how it's like it moves based on fear and it moves based on greed which is also a human emotion that's right I feel I feel connected to it right Beautiful. Because, it, because it is spiritual it, it, it's interesting and I look at it and like it's, and you see how the world shit moves it just as much as it moves the world yeah there's so much like you know like the powers that be right that control all this kind of thing that's right it's very interesting what, what got you to recognize that I think from from like my understanding of the world, right? Like like say me knowing what I know based on my own experiences in life, I try and see things with that lens. Mm. So if I say if I talk about jujitsu, if I talk about uh, just going about my day, I talk about it in in terms of like energy exchange. Yeah. Or I talk about it in terms of like what can I, how can I, you know, like it's more spiritual. I look at it in a more spiritual aspect. How can it? make me better yeah not like what can I get from the thing right? that's right so already from that lens I see the small talk market and I because I I I don't know much about it so I couldn't see it in that way until somebody explained it to me like actually this is this that, mm. that what what is true value right because by understanding about the stock market it, it made me learn more about money and how I never used to to care about money because I was a yogi well, I was yeah. a yogi I, didn't, I don't want to be part of the material world That's right. I rejected it mm. but remember what I told you also at the cafe where I said like I it's ultimately fear what right I'm afraid of becoming wealthy that's why I don't want it I reject it or I'm jealous somehow subconsciously of people that are rich because I don't I'm not rich yeah. so I subconsciously put it down oh you know people that are rich aren't happy or, or, or like the uh, material wealth doesn't give you true satisfaction. Yeah. I'm I'm the one that's living the real life. Yeah, right. Yeah. Of course, right? I have yeah. to reinforce my own uh, reality, ma. That's right. But then, if you don't care about money, money's not going to care about you. 
So once I understood a little bit more about the stock market, and I understand what the true value of wealth is, which is time, right? We hear this a lot. Having the time to do what you want to do is more important than having the money. What you need to do is to have enough money to do the thing that you want to do. Time. You don't yeah. have to have a lot of money. The right. goal isn't to reach a billion dollars. Right. The goal is to reach a certain amount that you, now you can use this money to be comfortable doing what you want to do because you have time to do it. So you're essentially trading money for time. And if I worked a nine to five, I'm trading time for money, which is not what I want because then I'm tired up to the end of the day. I don't have time to do the things yeah. I want to do. Yeah, I have money, but that's not the goal, right? right? So it's a shift of perspective. Now I care about money because I want to use that money to do things I want to do. Yep. But first of all, you have to have something you want to do, right? right? Which is also a whole another story. Let me let me add to that. Please. Is, uh, on top of time, it also buys you energy, right? Mm. Being able to take care of yourself, right? Being able to put yourself in positions where you um, draw more energy and not give away mm. by doing things that you love, being able to afford those things, by being able to afford... Um, Health, health, health-related items, mm. right? Stem cell therapy, good, good right? food, extending your life, food, exactly, yeah. right? Um, m- money is an amazing tool, like, um, and beyond yourself, beyond all the freedom that you get, you then get the power to mm. influence and shape and create in this world, mm. right? Because with money, you have resources mm. to then do the things that you 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 feel like you want to put out in the world. Money does give you freedom, financial freedom, exactly. freedom of choice also, right. which I, I find is very important because if you ha- have if you are not well-to-do, you have to decide, should I buy the iPhone 13 or should I buy the latest iPhone? Yeah. I don't, you know, and you're choosing, but if you have money, you just buy whatever you want, yeah. right? You don't have to choose, you just, I can afford it. I go to a restaurant, I want this. Mm-hmm. I don't have to look at the price, I don't have to think about what am I going to do. Can I eat tomorrow? You just do it. Absolutely. Because you're free to do it. Absolutely. And I, I love being free. Yeah. I, everybody ultimately wants to be free. What's free from free from free from free from everything? Liberation, right? Ultimately. We want to be free. And I can have all the time in the world, but if I have no money, what can I do? I'm still a slave to my own, you know, uh, limitations. That's right. But if I have money and I have time, mm-hmm. oh that's you know, you're great, you know, you're set, eh? That's right. So, even if people who have a lot of money, but then they're they are working all the time, they have no time for their family, they have no time for the things that they want to do, they're just grinding to get more zeros at the at the bank, at, yeah. at the end of their, yeah. their bank account, yeah. right? Then also, that serves no purpose because when you reach 80 years old, like, oh shit, now what, right? You That's, have no more energy, you have no more, you have no passion, all your friends are all gone, you know, like, what, what the fuck? That's the crazy thing and on top of that is that people have been sold this lie that um, you work towards retirement and then you can do whatever fuck you want. The problem is you don't have time, you don't have energy when you get there, right? But that's and beyond that, beyond that, right? You live your entire life working towards a future, right? For let's say 30, 40 years, working towards a supposed future where you can now relax. But then I've... That, I've seen so many people and I'm sure you know of some of them that these aunties and uncles when they get to there when they finally can retire they say I don't want to retire mm. I want to work I want to be useful mm. I want to make money and, and and the reason is because they've been so ingrained right this mindset that they have to be useful have to make money that when they get to the destination they don't know how to relax they can't switch it off because 30, 40 years of just having that mm. constantly working and trying to create value when they finally get the destination they can't turn it off and when they turn off it just feels so out of it mm. and they don't know how to relax and for me it's, it's just and then yeah. think about it like imagine your whole life you've been told that once you reach a certain age once you reach a certain uh, financial status you can chill and then when you are there, when you are 66 years old or whatever, you have enough CPF in the bank, and now, okay, I'm officially retired, now what? I've been told, like, once I reach this point, everything's going to be fine. I'm going to re- be sitting by the beach and, and drinking cocktails all day. But then I'm here, I am at the beach. It's not that great. The, the sun is very hot. The sand is in my, to- in my shoes. I don't even like drinking cocktails. Yeah. Why am I doing this? That's right. right? Because it's, pa- it's this picture that's, that's been painted yep. for everybody to, to, to achieve. 
join the matrix yeah <laughs> join the matrix and at the end of it we're all gonna be happy when we're 66 just contribute to society do the thing right follow follow everybody's doing it come on everybody's doing yeah. it you should do it too when we were younger we've been told that if someone asks you to jump off the cliff don't you wouldn't do it right yeah but now in today's society it's almost like you're saying everybody's jumping off the cliff why aren't you and it's just conformity especially in Singapore the safety in numbers right? small country easy to control everybody Asian mentality also yeah. it's so hard to break out of this this this, uh, this path right? it's very hard it's very hard you, you in Singapore you do any kind of alternative work that isn't like 9 to 5 isn't like engineer or, or that kind of, you want to be a painter you want to be an artist uh, very hard to earn money right yeah, because they've constructed it in that way you want to really be stable you want to buy a house you have to get married you have to uh, be a be a proper like engineer finance part of the the, the matrix uh. but if you are strong enough to break out of it if you're aware enough to break out of it I feel like that is it's a hard path because it's un it's not clear yeah right mm. everybody has walked this path you can see the path very yes. clearly but now you have to take the parang and like bash through the jungle and That's forge right. your own path yeah and you might not make it no right? you might be broke you might not make it but the, you see you see yourself the risk and reward if you are okay with the, with the follow the path once you follow this path you know at the end of that path 66 years later you know what's gonna happen if you're okay with that you, you take it nothing wrong but if you know where you're gonna, where this path is gonna lead to, and you feel it intrinsically that like this is not where I wanna be, then you must have the courage to forge your own path. You must take the the barang and bash through the jungle. You must find an alternative, all right? Yeah, I totally agree with mm-hmm. you. Um, but I would be a bit less aggressive to say that um, you don't have to. It's, mm-hmm. Um, you said must. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a bit more, you know whatever you don't have to but um, the choice is definitely yours whenever you feel ready and called to then take your own steps right? I, I, I feel that you must uh, because if we're talking about like uh, your authentic self it's if you go against what you want or what you feel is true to you then you are always going to be in conflict with yourself you're always going to think back like I should have done that you know I agree and by that point it might be too late already but at least you you're safe I agree but I just want to add is that um, um, what I want to add is that um, everyone has their own timeline Mm. right everyone has their own timeline and we we have to trust that everyone is capable of doing the best what they need to exactly right we trust that and uh, the other thing I also really believe is that like um, any of the your wisdom your things that holds true to you is only gained through your own experience right and for people to take your words at face value I feel it's it's not always they might not always get the same uh, uh, I would say the full understanding, right? right? right. If they were it just doesn't to apply to them, exactly, yeah. right? And and everyone's on their own journey, so um, whatever that resonates with you, that holds true to you, was gained through your experience, which they did not have. Yeah. And therefore, we shall allow them to unfold their own journeys themselves. Find your own yeah. path yeah. at the, your own right time. Yeah. But also, I think it's important to to still list, learn, learn from the people that have. Um, gone through certain things learn their lesson take what you can from whatever lessons that you can and implement it to your own path you don't have to follow in the footsteps of other people because you are on your own journey yep. yes I, I agree yep. with that always be open to learning um, but I want to say that don't I think I think people tend to either follow too much on people that they put on a pedestal mm-hmm. so the people they look up to right they think oh this guy because he's so great at things his advice must hold true right but without when they follow certain advice they do not truly understand the wisdom behind it the whys and whatnot um, 
and people are not following blindly mm. and um, I feel like that could also be to their own detriment of not being able to f- formulate their own wisdom which I agree, is I agree. limiting their own potential mm. because I feel like everyone has the ability to discover for themselves what holds true it's like jujitsu right mm. um, not every move would work for you someone who a black belt might say oh this is the best move and you defer to his opinion because he's a black belt and you think he knows better mm. but that might not necessarily hold true for you true, true, until true. you try and test it right mm. so I'll just say be open but don't buy into advices at face value just experiment and trust the process trust the process exactly mm. it's a process and we're on a journey mm. enjoy it Leela right divine play just have fun with the, the journey and um, failures and success is part of it you know at the end of the day we die right at the end of the day we die none of this matters nothing matters nothing right matters. The, we bring the nothing universe has the been life. exactly the universe has been around for billions and billions of years but our life spends like what 100 years max 100, 200 years max we're a right? blink in the in the grand scale of the universe's life exactly we're just a moment in time mm-hmm. nothing nothing matters matters yeah, just have fun. Yeah, we're not. There's nowhere to be. There's nothing to achieve, right? Just be yourself, mm. right? Yeah. I like that. It's a it's a great way to end things off. Also, I feel it's yeah. a nice nice little quote. Um, do you have anything else? Do you want to share? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> any final any final words? I don't know, just uh, if there's anything that comes to me is um, if any there's any message I want to share it's um, love, love more mm-hmm. love love yourself love others love your challenges love the bad actors embrace, embrace it all like like love it like love it like the bad actors in your life love them right like people that you judge that people that you hate right because if you're go if you if you're gonna watch a good movie it's only good because of the how great the villain is uh, if it's only good guys what kind of show is that right wow interesting and at the end of the day it's all play it's yeah. it's all play at the end of the day we are just playing a character and the bad guys are just playing a character there's nothing personal against you I love it right they're just playing the bad guy yeah so love them for giving your life flavor love yourself love everyone it's all love at the end of the day it's all love that's where I'm at in my discovery and that's what I'm seeing I love it yeah thanks for sharing yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me on. It's yeah. beautiful. Easy. Like I said, I told you. Awesome. Easy stuff. Yeah. All right, man. Cool. Good. <laughs> Safe travels, I guess. Thank you. What are you, what are you up to? Uh... Okay. Uh, thank you for listening till the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, nothing, again, nothing... Uh, Easy chat, nothing really much to debrief here. Uh, I think recently I followed his travels on Instagram and I saw that he had just proposed to his uh, longtime girlfriend a few days ago. So congratulations to you both. I wish you both all the best in in your new journey together. Uh, other than that, uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing much. Uh, hope you're all doing well and as always if you like what you hear share this with your friends repost it on IG tag me tag the Mostly Yoga Podcast uh, page and then also if you want to donate coffee.com slash Mostly Yoga the links will be in the description below if you have any questions message me you want to reach out to him message him Uh, you know if you see me around just say hi I'll say hi back the usual Until the next episode again have a good day have a good week have a good life that's all thank you tune in next time for the next one bye